Paddy Power, sponsors of the Road to Cheltenham. Well, this is it. It's over. The last day of the Cheltenham Festival. We've been talking about it for so long and it has delivered uh, the 2024 Cheltenham Festival. It's delivered. I suppose what we expected, which is Willie Mullins and Paul Tannen going home as top trainer, top jockey, with a haul of nine for Willie Mullins. Yes, and a great haul, an amazing haul, and a train he's 100 winner as well. Um, incredible at the festival, and yeah, it, it was a, a great week, I think. Yes, and six for Paul as well. Yeah, yeah. unbelievable, a Gold Cup and a champion hurdle thrown in there. Uh, a couple of good novices for next year as Absolutely. well. And what you want, I mean. I suppose as a jockey and a trainer, even as owners, you want the stars coming through. Yeah, which is absolutely delivered in every way. But obviously the Gold Cup, the most important thing. And now Paul is the equal most successful jockey in the race with Pat Taff, four winners, two from Album Photo, two with Gallop into Champ. Yeah, and what, like two incredible horses to come across in your lifetime. And Gallop into Champ this afternoon was, what was he? Maybe less flamboyant than he was last year. More gritty, more determined. Yes. Uh, gutsier, brilliant jump at the last. And he ground it out. Definitely not as flamboyant as he was last year, but he was still a dominant winner. It was a different kind of race, Paul was saying. He was able to cover him up and have he had plenty left for the closing stages. This time he did have to be, your word, gritty. Gritty, yeah, but I suppose that's the development of a horse as well. He's not as flamboyant as he was mm. uh, as a six-year-old or a seven-year-old. He's now eight, and the older he gets, the less flamboyant he'll get. But mm. um, look, he has two on the board, and to win Gold Coast back-to-back, -back, it's a fair achievement. I think it's really appropriate in the 100th year of the Beatles Cheltenham Gold Cup yeah, that we is. have a great winner, and that, that is a great winner. I would agree with that 100%. I think that's what the sport needs. It needs uh, not superstars, humans come and go. It needs superstar horses. That's what we all come to watch. And you know, I was only saying it to AP earlier, like, we move on, the riders before us move on, the trainers come and go. It's superstar horses. We're still talking about Arthur. We're yeah. still talking about Carlos Star. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's what you need. It's all about the horse. Well, he could have a chance of equaling best mates three in a row. Yeah, this that time would next be year. that would be amazing if he did. But there was a couple of novices one here this week that stuck their hand up to take him on. Well, that's the point. And one of them back back to file. You know, yeah. in, the, in the same yard. And Corbett's Cross. And yep. you can make an argument for Greg Downing too. But yep. that's what the sport needs. And uh, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm two glass half full, but. I think this was a lot better than people think. I think it was I think it was really good. It was a really strong goal cup. It was a feel-good winner's enclosure as well. In second, Jerry Colong, career best performance. Gordon Elliott really proud of that. And yeah, he was, of course he was, and he improved a lot from his run at Leprestown, but that didn't look like a true running. Yeah. He stopped in Leprestown. He kept going from the last fence today. And a great run from Cory Grammer, who was outpaced, but he got a love of horse to try, and he kept trying. And Lumpresse as well. Benicia yeah. Williams and Andy Ed was really proud of him. As they should be. But like, it was billed as a, goal, a big goal cup, and it delivered. And the loose horse, fast, I mean, the, if, if you'd have said one horse is not going to get around, you could have had faster flow slow would have been my outsider of the field. I know, but when you do things quickly, you're living on the edge. He's a quick jumper. Yeah, and he was the one that was getting in the way. Paul was having to he was think about him. Fourth last, third last, but anyway, he got the decision right. He did. Go back to the first, the JCB Triumph Hurdle, and Majborough won it with Mark Walsh on board for Willie Mullins. And this is the horse with a future. This is not just a, a precocious juvenile. This is a horse that can go on. It is, but next year is tricky for him, whether he's precocious or not. Four rise and five. Does he go on his chase and? He needs age, he needs time, and, and that's the that's the catch with him. So look, hopefully he will he will be precocious, but what he does next year will be interesting. Yes, Mark Walsh was hoping that he might be chasing next year. Willie Mullins, as you're saying, was just saying, I'm not sure I want to go chasing uh, yeah, with a five-year-old. Yeah, I agree with him. It's you need time to mature, to, to, to grow, to develop. Like he's a fabulous specimen mm. of horse. Cargiza was a, a really good second, probably over-raced a little bit. Salva uh, was a doughty third for, for Gary Moore. Our second race was the county hurdle, and Willie Mullins says that this was the best ride of the week from Paul Townend. It was a cruel, I mean, it really weird today. Like, nobody wanted to lead in the county hurdle. And it's happened before. It has happened before. It gets slow ground, you don't want to go too soon. Mm -hmm. And it became a dash, or a bit of a dash, and Paul sat last, but... He was riding the fastest horse. Uh, great, I, I agree. Great ride. Great to watch how he found his way through. But when everybody sprinted off the bend, it opens for you. Yeah. Like it comes arrow formation yeah. almost, and away you go. And he picked his spots, and 
I thought the horse was gutsy and admirable to say you could run in Melbourne in November Absolutely. on concrete and come back to Cheltenham and the complete opposite and be really good, yeah. Yeah, absurd. It won the um, e ball as well. Um, Willie is think wanting hankering to get to scratch that Melbourne Cup itch. You'd like to go back there. Might see that horse on the flat as well. And he outspeeded Loda Surd in that race. Then we had the Albert Bartlett, and again, this wasn't a strongly run race. And it looked like Keelan Woods was going to be able to control the race. Well, he did on the jukebox man, but heartbreakingly, he was run down by Sam Ewing on Seller Story. Yeah, and I thought Keelan gave the jukebox man yes a great ride um dictated it went at the right time he just got the wrong not his fault he met the last on the wrong straight and the horse got in and lost a bit of momentum but the, the winner was lucky seller story launched out of sam ewing's hands he was that close to pitching over on his nose and going down um, but when your luck is in you end up winning and but i died for sam ewing i think he is a i felt sorry for keelan woods who's a very good rider but i think uh, sam ewing is a star of the future and Good to see him in the winner. Here. Yeah, we saw him with that when he rode Conflated, a late caller for the Gold yeah. Cup last year. Beautiful ride in third on Conflated. Yeah. So it's great to see him in the Winners of Glacier for his first Cheltenham Festival win. Heartbreak for Keelan Woods. I thought after a difficult season, I thought he was going to have the fairy tale yeah. ending. And yeah, I felt sorry for him. Yeah, and Ben Pauling has brought his team here in good, good form. He's had yeah. a winner in two seconds. Well, so he did, and a bit like the Skeletons, you know, he, he knew where he wanted to perform. Mm. Um, and he has done so. He, rising force, the last two seasons, this season the last, has been great for Ben Pauling. I loved, I love the St James's place under Chase. I really did. I thought it was a beautiful, be I thought it was a really exciting race for starters. It was. And the results in a nominee with John Dawson and Fiona Needham, of course, who ran this race as a rider in 2002. Our last option, yeah. Mm. And it, it was. And it didn't look likely going to the last. It's on the line drifted in and the winner had to switch. But when the winner got into daylight on the stand side from the back of the last fence, he really stuck its head down and went all the way to the line. And it was. And it's the kind of result you want in a hunter chase, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. John Dawson was reflecting. He was wondering what he was doing, going, trying to get the inside of his hero, Derek O'Connor, going for the last. But luckily, he thought better of it. And the mare did really well after that late switch to then actually be able yeah, to land the jump. Got a bit of daylight and got running. Yeah, yeah she did. Very yeah. stuff. Then we had the Mrs. Paddy Power Mare's Chase, and this was won by Limerick Lace. Uh, full sister to I Know The Way You're Thinking. Uh, Keith Donoghue on board for Gavin Cornwell, second winner of the week of the Gavin Cornwell, and Keith Donoghue is first, fifth winner overall at the festival, first outside the cross country, and that was important to him. Yeah, I'd say it was. I'd say it was, and he was always in the right place on her. She jumped and travelled. She probably outstayed her opposition. Um, outstayed Allegory de Vassi, and probably outstay Dino Blue as well. In the conditions. In the conditions. But look, that's what it's all about the conditions. We can talk about it all winter until you know what the pitch is going to be like. Who knows what's going to happen. Yeah, and it's a nice assertive ride from Keith Donoghue as well. This horse has improved all season. She does have a Grand National entry. It should be interesting in that. And then we ended off with a third winner of the day after Seller Story in the Alba Barlet for Gordon Elliott. That was his second winner of the Cheltenham Festival. His third came in the last. It was a first winner at the Cheltenham Festival for the very talented Danny Gilligan on board Better Days Ahead. Yeah, and came from off the pace and was the finisher was the closer and the finisher got to water for Whispers who probably over-raced. Yes. Key de Bourbon was third and were they all novices? Is Waterford Whispers a novice? Yes. All and novices. And Anster Cape as well in fourth. Yeah, yeah fourth. Yeah. All the novices. Yeah. Lots of promise in that race. Yeah. It often, I mean, Galloping to Sean the obvious one but Sir Sean as well previously. Get old to Vic, Don Pauly. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's it, Oroco as well who ran well in yes. the Turners. So it is a race for that kind of horse but if you wonder where all the novices have gone from the novice races. In the mountain pipe. Well, it will be interesting to see how your club race courses in Cheltenham reflect on uh, the, how the meeting has gone. I think they'll be pleased with it. I think there'll be things to learn from it as well. I'm sure we'll be talking about it later on in the series. But this is the end of the, the Cheltenham element of the road to, yeah. to Cheltenham. Where are we going next? <laughs> well, I, I hope we're going to Aintree next. That would be nice. Up the M6. <laughs> and play first, yeah? Maybe not straight away. Maybe right, not right. straight away. What's, we'll take we got. what's been your favourite bit of the season to date? Oh, the or, even the, or even the festival, the maybe festival it's at the festival. Season, uh, I don't know, I come here every year hoping to see horses perform, and I thought we saw some proper performances here. Uh, you can crab the champion chase, but I thought it was great for Declan Andy and Rachel Blackboard Henry Bromit to get their day with a horse like Captain Guinness. Chupu, uh, Stateman, without Constitution Hill, that was unfortunate, but that's what happens in sport. And Gallop and Deschamps delivered, and he had all the novices, and I, I don't know. I don't think national race has gone as bad as 
something to do. And this factor file, Slade Steel, Valley Burn for the future as well. Well, that's it for the road, the last wrap of the Cheltenham Festival. I hope that you've enjoyed the journey along with us. Thank you very much to the whole team who have enabled us, enabled us to yes. look goodish. Or, Don't or start right. naming them. Or no, no I'm, not, I'm not going to. Because there's a hell of a lot of them. Absolutely, there is. And we thank them all. Thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed it. Good night. Paddy Power, sponsors of the Road to Cheltenham. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com. <laughs> <laughs>